What a day to be caught out in the rain without an umbrella. Today marked the end of a month-long drought, and the heavens had opened in spectacular fashion to commemorate the occasion. You were on your way home from work, tired and now completely drenched. You ran down the street, splashing through puddles in your work shoes as your hair clung to your face and the rain soaked through your jacket, your blouse and into your skin. It was only your sprinting that staved off a bitter chill. You were maybe 10 to 15 minutes from the train station. All you wanted to do was get home, have a shower and swap into a fluffy set of pyjamas to forget that you had overheard your co-workers calling you plain and an eyesore earlier today. But when you heard a rumble of thunder, you thought it best to take shelter in case the weather got worse on the way. You scanned the street for somewhere to go. Up ahead, there was an airboard decorated in windswept wisteria. You couldn't read what was written, but there was a drawing of a teapot. Hopefully, that meant a cafe. You were short on cash, but perhaps a cup of tea was just what you needed to wind down from work. A bell chimed overhead as you opened the unassuming door and stepped inside. The entrance room was very small. It was quaint, like the reception of an old English tea room with wisteria vines and clematis growing in large pots. There was a desk, currently unmanned, and a staircase that led up to, presumably, the cafe. With no one around, you wondered if you could shelter in the doorway. You were wet through and didn't feel right spoiling any of the furniture. You looked outside. The rain was getting heavier. Ma'am? You jumped and turned around, catching sight of an old lady sitting behind the desk. She certainly hadn't been there before. Your eyes scanned the room. There were no other doors. How had she... Is everything all right? You look positively frozen. You only noticed then that you were shivering. Ah, yes, yes, I'm fine. I'm, I'm sorry. Don't be, dear. The woman smiled. Come in, come in. We have just what you'll need to get warm. You looked at her, looked at the way she held her pen poised over an admissions book, then glanced outside unsurely. She noticed your uncertain gaze and then nodded to herself, setting the pen down. You needn't worry, dear. We welcome all, even those who drift in from a storm. Stay for as long as you like, or as little. What matters is that you're comfortable. It couldn't hurt to stay a while, you thought. At least until the weather improved. You doubted your wallet could afford much longer though. Thank you, you said with a shy bow, for where you must look a complete mess. The woman bowed back, seeing that you planned to stay, then scratched something into her book. She gestured towards the stairs. May you have a pleasant stay. You bowed again, then made for the staircase, well aware of the wet trail following behind you. Had there been a coat rack at the front door, you would have at least left your jacket, but you took it with you, feeling guilty and cold. There was another door at the top of the stairs. It was plain, with no glass panels to sneak a peek, so you opened it before you had any chance to hesitate. You were willing to bear odd looks from the other customers if it meant drying off. Ah, oh, so you thought, until you saw the cafe. Welcome home, princess. Oh, it was one of those cafes. From floor to ceiling, everything was crisp and quaint with a high-class touch, including to your surprise, the staff. From a quick scan of the room, you realised that the servers were all male, they were attractive even from a distance, and they all had on tailcoats as they served from silver trays. You were out of your depth. The one who had addressed you, calling you princess, no less, was a man standing just inside the door 
at a podium covered in ivy. He was tall, with kempt blue hair and kind eyes that were only partially hidden by the sheen of his glasses. You thought, for a second, that he was looking you up and down, disapproving of your dishevelled appearance, but you realised it was a trick of the light when he smiled and bowed in greeting. Will you be dining with us alone, my princess? You felt your heart clench and had to tell yourself to behave, knowing he was only being nice to you as part of his job. You could still hear how your co-workers had gossiped about you, calling you an eyesore behind your back. You told yourself you were here to avoid the rain and nothing more. You nodded in response, then glanced around at the other customers, only wishing you looked as presentable. Their fine clothes were intimidating. You were a sorry state in comparison. The man plucked a menu from behind the podium. Then please, follow me. He gave a curt but stiff bow, then took you into the room. You followed behind him, keeping your eyes to the back of his tailcoat to avoid any unwanted stares. You went to peel the wet hair away from your face, but worried that it would draw more attention and stopped. Mercifully, he took you to a two-person table more towards the edge of the room instead of dead centre. Whether intentional or not, you were thankful for his choice. He set your menu down, then pulled out your chair, pushing it in once you were seated. Your butler for today shall be with you momentarily, princess. My name is Tenya Ida, and do not hesitate to ask should you need anything more from me. He bowed again, then headed back to the front of the cafe. You brushed your fingers over the menu, studying the different drinks and desserts while avoiding eye contact with the other guests, the dampness of your clothes seeping deeper into your skin, enough to make you shiver. You needed something to warm you up. A drink would have to do. The food was too expensive. You were too poor. You weren't meant to be here. You were a mess. What on earth were you doing? Princess? The innocent question pulled you from your downward spiral of thoughts, enough to snap your eyes up to look at your server. You gulped. God, he was handsome. Blonde, with onyx black eyes, great poise, and a tail that was nearly as thick and as long as his body. You felt a sting of shame in your cheeks. You had half a mind to get up and walk out, well aware you were so out of place and so shabby in comparison to the customers he must be used to. But if he was shocked by your appearance, he did not show it. In fact, when he saw that he had your attention, he put an arm across his waist and bowed to you. Welcome. Princess, my name is Majiro Ojiro. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. He smiled in a way that made your heart flutter. <laughs> um, yes, likewise. You didn't know what to do with yourself. This was a spring attack if ever there was one. You felt yourself shaking and were only half sure it was from the cold. An uncomfortable tingle ran up the back of your neck. Against your better judgement, you glanced into the room, holding yourself with one arm. You had a horrible feeling that some of the other customers were watching you from their seats. Can I get you anything to drink, my princess? Something hot, perhaps? You glanced at Ojiro, who was poised with a pen and notepad, then at the table. You couldn't meet his gaze. What were you even doing here? No, I... Uh... Maybe it was best to brave the storm. I should probably... You looked at the other guests, feeling your heart sink when you caught someone looking. You wiped awkwardly at your face, grimacing when you saw the stains of streaked makeup on your fingers. I'd better... To your surprise, Ojiro suddenly slipped into the seat across from you, his tail curling around his waist so that it didn't spill onto the floor. Is everything alright? There was an earnest look on his face, like your answer was more important than taking your order. Oh, um, yes, 
no, I, I'm sorry. Uh, please, don't worry. You felt even worse for making a stranger concerned about you. You tried to rub the mascara away between your fingertips. You didn't want to be a bother, of all things. I just... I shouldn't be here. What makes you say that? A frown settled across his brow. His butler persona had slipped off his face. Ojiro, it turned out, did not like to see people upset. It was in his nature to care. It made him a perfect employee for the butler cafe, but more so than that, he felt genuine concern watching you shiver, and hated the way you glanced around at the other customers like you were less than them. He knew all too well what that felt like. His quirk was often ridiculed as nothing more than an extra limb, rendering him practically useless in society. Your face was blurred with makeup, and your hair was a mess from the rain, but if anything, that made Ojiro think you were the most worthy to be here of anyone. The cafe was a retreat, a safe space from the worries and the trials of the outside world. He wanted you to know you were welcome. If it's alright, please, come with me. He extended a hand towards you, an olive branch he sorely hoped you would accept. You didn't know what to say. It was sudden, and you weren't sure what he planned to do, but the expression on his face was kind. It didn't suggest he was about to kick you out from being underdressed and a mess. Despite the nerves in the pit of your stomach, you bit your lip, then took his hand. He gave a short sigh of relief, like he had expected you to reject him. But as soon as your hand was in his, he helped you up from the chair, then guided you towards a door at the side of the room. The pace of his walk had you guessing that perhaps he wasn't meant to be doing this. He opened the door, then sent you ahead of him, checking once more around the room to make sure the two of you left unseen. After walking through a collection of corridors, you came to a door with a teacup engraved into the wood. This is where we change the butlers. Ojiro held the door wide for you. You passed him by, keeping your gaze to the ground as your self-image plagued on you. The room seemed to be a dressing chamber, with wardrobes, vanities and plenty of mirrors. You forced your eyes to the ground, unwilling to see your reflection. Ojiro caught you staring at the floor. He had met enough customers and knew enough of his own insecurity to know you weren't feeling yourself. He took your hand before you got too far, then guided you to sit in front of the closest vanity, swiveling the chair so you did not have to see your reflection. Hold it for a sec. He offered you a reassuring smile while you continued to shiver. You nodded, watching as he crossed the room to a hamper. He rummaged through it for a moment, then produced a large towel. Here. He came back to you, then wrapped it around your shoulders. You clutched it against you, feeling a blush creep onto your cheeks from his surprise act of kindness. He reached past you, opening a drawer in the vanity. Perhaps he didn't realize how close he was to you, or didn't care, but he brushed so close that you caught a whiff of his cologne. It was a delightful combination of oranges and vanilla, and only made your blush deepen. But you stopped yourself. You had no right to fantasize or get flustered. He was out of your league. This whole place was. You were ordinary. Outer appearances aren't everything. His words surprised you. It was as if he had been thinking the same thing. He drew back with something in his hand. A packet of wet wipes. You smiled shyly, thankful for the gesture, but felt your heart skip a beat when he crouched down in front of you and pulled a wipe from the packet. May I? He looked up at your face with those kind eyes of his. I... You began, unsure you could answer him. Why... Are you doing this? His smile grew. It was infectious, 
sneaking its way deep into your heart where it could warm you from the inside. Because I met a woman who looked like she could use a friend, not a butler, and not someone who judges a person by their panda eyes. You managed a soft chuckle as he cupped your face to hold it still. Then he wiped away the trails of mascara from your cheeks, brushing the hair away from your face so he could remove the last of your splotchy foundation. There's something to be said for a natural face. He rubbed gentle circles over the more stubborn remains of your makeup. You sighed, trying to focus on replying instead of how close he was or how gentle his hands were. I wish I didn't feel so plain and faceless without my makeup. Oh, I don't know. I think you're very pretty without it. He rested the wipe over your right eye, leaving it to pick up the clumped mascara on your lashes. He was very smooth. You had to give him that. But you supposed he had to be, given his job. <laughs> I bet you say that to all the girls. You wanted to believe him, but your co-worker's words ran through your mind. If they could say that about you, what might a total stranger truly think? Only, when you looked into his eyes, you saw something close to hurt, like you had wounded his pride. Ah, I'm sorry, you said as he wiped your eyes clean. Don't be. He recovered. I know what you mean. Though I need a certain degree of charm as a butler, I don't get my feelings so freely. I meant what I said. He rubbed your face until it was clean, then threw the wipe in a bin below the vanity. There. Does that feel any better? He grinned proudly. You couldn't help but notice that his tail had started wagging. Mm-hmm. You agreed without putting much thought to the question, feeling shy from such an intimate exchange. The two of you stayed quiet for a while looking at one another with the sound of the rain pattering against the cafe roof in the background. Would you like a hairdryer? The question came quite out of the blue. Ojiro pulled himself up from his haunches, then placed a leisurely hand on his hip while he waited for your answer. Now that there was more than a couple of inches between your faces, you managed to find your ability to speak again. It'll only get wet once I go back outside. You pulled the towel tighter around you at the thought. Ojiro's tail stilled. Only if you leave right now, you won't stay a while? I... You trailed off. You wanted to tell him that you weren't like his regular guests with their extravagance or eccentricity, or their money either. You were just you, and hardly worth the fuss. But there was an earnestness to him that made you think he truly wanted you to stick around. I suppose I could. Until the rain stops. Until the rain stops. Ojiro repeated with a reflex happy thump of his tail. He reached into a second drawer in the vanity to retrieve a hairdryer, then a brush after that. I hope these are alright. The brush is mine, and the hairdryer works, but it's temperamental. You said they were fine. As he plugged the dryer in for you, you spanned the chair so you could see what you were doing in the mirror. Though you had undoubtedly looked worse with makeup streaks down your face, you couldn't help feeling ordinary as you looked at your reflection. It certainly didn't help that your hair was in disarray. When the dryer was set to go, Ojiro gave you a thumbs up, then left you to it while he rummaged in one of the wardrobes on the far wall. You brushed out your hair cursing and swearing under your breath as you fought with the knots, then tried to use the hairdryer. Only, it would not work. Uh, Ojiro? You asked, feeling shy for using his name for the first time. But his tail thumped as he turned to address you. Hmm? How do you work this? Ah. He said, coming back to you with a pile of clothes in hand. He set them down on the floor close by then tried to walk you through the directions for the temperamental hairdryer. If you flick that switch halfway up, then hold that one down. Your confused expression was enough to tell him any further instructions would be pointless. He took the hairdryer from you and showed you what he meant, only instead of giving it back to you, 
He turned it on your hair, then took the brush from you when you offered it. Watching the concentration on his face as he blow-dried your hair was a sight better than having to watch your own reflection, particularly when he looked so concerned about doing a good job. He smiled at you when he caught you looking. You smiled back before you caught yourself. No, there was no way he liked you for real. It was his job. You needed to stop getting swept up because it would only make you more upset when your fantasy came crashing down. But his hands were so gentle, taking the utmost care not to hurt you or tug on your hair as he dried it. And taking care of you like this had to be going above and beyond his duties as a butler. It only begged the question again, why was he being so kind to you? Once your hair was dry, he styled it and sprayed it to keep it out of your face, then asked you something that made your face flush. Would you like to wear my clothes? S sorry you squeaked, checking him up and down. Your mind undressed him where he stood, exposing the lean muscles underneath his butler outfit, and you lost your voice after that. You hadn't noticed quite how toned he was until now. My normal clothes, I mean. They might not fit properly, but they're dry at least. He picked the pile of clothes off the floor, then held them out towards you. You don't have to, but I wouldn't want you to catch a cold. There was that disarming kindness again. His sincerity brought your heart close to melting. Thank you. You accepted the clothes from him. Then he offered to take your jacket, saying he would put it in an airing cupboard to dry while you stayed in the cafe. You thanked him again, unwrapping the towel from your shoulders, then shrugged the jacket off, but stopped when you saw a blush jump to his cheeks. Ah, uh, miss, I... your blouse... He didn't know where to look, his cheeks turning pink. You looked down, wondering what was wrong, and saw that your wet blouse had turned completely see-through. You squeaked and tried to cover yourself. Ojiro fumbled as he swept up the discarded towel with his tail, then passed it back to you. Sorry, I didn't see anything. No, well, I, I did, but not for long. Sorry, I'll take your jacket. I'll be outside. Ojiro grabbed your wet clothes, then made a sharp beeline for the door. The backs of his ears were pink. Your embarrassment forced you to laugh. Thank you, you called to him, holding the towel around your middle. He held a hand into the air, refusing to look back. No problem. You waited until he was on the other side of the door, then let the towel drop with an awkward chuckle. What a day to be wearing your nice bra. As you swapped into Ojiro's spare clothes, you noticed a smile on your face that would not go away. You weren't sure how to explain it. You thought of the blonde as you shrugged his shirt over your head, being enveloped by the wonderful scents of oranges and vanilla. It was strange. He was brushing away your insecurities one by one. When you were done changing, you gathered up your clothes, then knocked on the door to tell him you were done. He opened it from his side, then stopped when he saw you. His cheeks dusted pink again. Uh, uh, I hope they fit all right. He noticed the way your body wore his clothes in all the right places. You tried to be oblivious to the way he alternated between lingering his gaze on you and being too flustered to look, but truth be told, you felt nice. You forgot that you were ordinary and not enough to be here. To Ojiro, you were enough. Even without makeup, with rain frizzy hair and clothes that did not fit all that well, somehow you did not mind. Not when he looked at you. Aren't you going to get in trouble for this? You asked, knowing he had done much more than was expected of a cafe butler in making you feel welcome. He tried to laugh it off, but you could see an uneasiness in his eyes. Possibly, but don't let that worry you. I was happy to do it. His sincere smile gave you goosebumps. Then, like fixing a mask back into place, he went rigid and bowed in a very gentlemanly manner. 
Now, my princess, shall we? His genuine smile slipped through the cracks for just a moment, reassuring you that he was on your side if you felt nervous to return to the cafe. His butler mode was attractive, but it was nothing in comparison to what lay beneath. You let out a real heartfelt laugh for the first time since arriving. You nodded and curtsied to play along, then allowed Ojiro to escort you back to the cafe. You were confident after his pampering, and did not mind at all if you caught someone looking at you. He had worked his magic, giving you the strength to shake your fear of being judged. After sneaking you out of the back and into your seat, giving you his hand to help you sit down, Ojiro pulled out his notepad and pen, then surreptitiously glanced around the room. Keeping your voice low, you ask, Do you think you got away with it? He looked around the room once more, then bowed his head to you with a soft smile. I think so. Good. You felt your body relax. The last thing you wanted was for him to be in trouble because of you. To keep up appearances, he asked if you would like a pot of tea. You looked over the menu, but there were so many to choose from, you didn't know where to start. Um, You were like a deer in headlights. Ojiro smiled fondly at your expression, finding more things to like about you the longer he stayed with you. I've got just a tea, he said after a moment. There was a knowing look on his face. With that, he gave a curt bow, then disappeared across the room to where the kitchens were. When he returned, he had a silver tray balanced on one hand. He slipped you a cheeky smile to say hello, then fixed a more professional expression to his face before he poured the tea for you. Chamomile and orange. Brewed for two minutes. A tea known for its relaxing properties. The steam rose as he poured it for you, filling your nose with a delightfully sweet fragrance. It reminded you of the moment he had leaned across you, being so close to you in the changing room. You felt warm at the memory. Will my princess be fancying anything sweet today? He set the teapot down on the table, then waited for your answer. It managed to pull you from your gooey days. After catching yourself, you shook your head and lifted the teacup to your lips. You blew on it, then looked up at him, giving him an unintentionally wide-eyed stare that made his heart flutter heavily in his chest. The desserts look lovely, but my budget stretches to tea today. He fought to keep his butler persona fixed in place. Your expression did funny things to him, but one of his many pluses was his professionalism. He bowed with an understanding nod. Of course. Though he had no desire to leave your table, he could not keep you company for the entirety of his shift. He pointed to a small silver bell on one side of the table. Please ring that, should you need anything from me. You smiled, thanking him, then sipped your tea as he glided away to serve another table. You took another sip, enjoying the orange-scented undertones, then sighed contentedly. What a strange but wonderful afternoon this had become. You watched Ojiro as he worked, the professional bows and smiles he gave to customers, but none like that he had shown you. He caught you looking once or twice, and each time his tail gave a happy thump and you looked away with a shy chuckle. When your cup was empty, he returned to you, pouring you a second drink, then surprised you with a small dessert. Try this. He was trying to hide how he kept slipping out of character around you from his managers. He couldn't seem to keep up an act around you. The chef made a new dessert. Let me know what you think, okay? He smiled when he saw the happy surprise in your expression. Then he glided away. A swell of warmth bubbled in your chest. You ate the pudding with vigor after the first bite. You were planning to be delicate and quaint to fit in with the cafe's aesthetic, but it tasted too good to hold back. When Ojiro returned, he saw your face and laughed before catching himself, placing a knuckle to his lips. Then he took the napkin from your table and dabbed the corner of your mouth. 
You felt the blush on your cheeks, but enjoyed the doting nonetheless. Until you realised he had seen you with pudding on your face. Was the dessert to your liking, my princess? You caught the way he tried to hold down a snigger. It was lovely. I'd recommend it, you said, wiping your lips with your thumb to make sure they were clean. Great. I'll inform the chef. He bowed, letting his gaze linger on you for as long as he dared, then took your place and returned to the kitchen. You spent the rest of your stay in the cafe like that. Ojiro served the room, and you drank the teas he recommended as you watched him, enjoying that he always found a way to come back to you, finding some excuse to talk to you or to give you another dessert to try. The other patrons had to ring their bells to get his attention. You didn't touch yours once. But, as all good things do, your stay in the cafe had to come to an end. You kept one eye on the weather, knowing you needed to get home with another day at work waiting for you tomorrow. When you could no longer hear the rain pattering down on the roof, you drank the last of your tea, then finally rang your bell. Ojiro appeared in moments, bowing as he always did when first arriving at your table. My princess? You smiled and drank in his appearance, committing as much of his presence to memory as possible before you muttered, keeping out of everyone's earshot but his. Is there any way I can slip into the back to get changed? Are you off? He looked surprised. Regretfully, yes. He checked his watch, like you might have misinterpreted the time, like there might be a way for you to stay a while longer. But your words told him your time together was up, and he nodded dutifully, respecting your decision. Wait just one moment, please. He bowed, then turned and disappeared off into the kitchens. You watched him go with a gentle ache in your heart. It made you feel almost silly, the way you wondered if he felt just as sad to see you go. Had you imagined a connection? Or would it be strange of you to set aside a part of your wage just to visit the cafe, to visit him again? That was a point. A dread filled your stomach at the thought of your bill. This was no ordinary cafe. Normally, in these kinds of places, you paid for the length of your stay plus anything you drank on top. There was going to be one heck of a premium because of the service too, you just knew it. Not to mention... Would you have to pay for those desserts Ojiro fed you? Your mind fizzled, trying to tot up the total cost of your stay. But before you lost your mind completely, Ojiro returned with a look on his face that calmed you down in an instant. He was holding a paper bag with the cafe's logo on it. Your clothes. You took them from him, then pointed at the door he had taken you through earlier. Should I... just go in? Hmm? Ojiro seemed confused, but realised you meant to go and change, so held out a hand to stop you. Ah, uh, no. It's alright. Please. They're still damp, so borrow my clothes for now. A quiet fell over you as you looked at him, his words replaying in your mind. He had just given you an excuse to see him again. Is that... will that be okay? Hmm? He pondered what you had said, not quite catching your meaning. Do you... oh... do you want to see me again? Only if you'll let me. He said it with such an innocent expression on his face, making your face light up. Of course. You held each other's gaze, both happy and both feeling a swell of anticipation for a time that lay beyond the end of today. Then Ojiro slipped into the perfect butler once more. Will that be everything, my princess? Your receipt is waiting at the front desk, if that is all. He bowed one final time. It was deep and meaningful, like he truly thanked you for appearing in his life today. You clutched the bag of clothes to your chest, smiling from ear to ear. Thank you, Ojiro, you said 
crinkling the bag at the sides from holding it so tightly. Thank you for being so incredibly kind to me. As he continued to bow, you bowed back. Then with the prospects of seeing him again soon, you said a final goodbye. When you turned to walk away, he raised his head, smiling fondly at the back of you. Once you were at the top of the stairs outside the tea room, you pressed your hand to your heart and sighed to steady yourself. You were giddy and nervous and warm. Ojiro's bright smile filled your head and you welcomed the blush that crept onto your cheeks, letting yourself enjoy this moment. Even if it was only a ploy to make you spend more money at the cafe, you were looking forward to seeing him again. You honestly, truly were. You descended the stairs with a spring in your step, only marginally deflating when you saw the woman perch behind her desk at the bottom, realising you still had to pay. It was worth it, you told yourself. Whatever she charged you, it was worth it. Yet, you still held your breath when you asked her for the bill. Bill? The woman gave you a soft smile. Why, my dear, there is no bill. No, what? She reached into a drawer beneath the desk, pulling out a slip of paper, then slid it towards you. It's been paid in full. You looked over the receipt. Firstly, dear God you saw the final price. How could tea cost so much? But then you saw the signature at the bottom. Ojiro had paid for everything. Your heart swelled. You had half a mind to run back upstairs and fling your arms around him, but realised it would only cause him trouble if his managers saw. But the woman looked at you. She really looked, like she was seeing you for the first time. My dear, are those Ojiro's clothes you're wearing? Your chest went tight. Oh, you couldn't be getting him into trouble after everything. Oh, no, I, uh... And your makeup? Your hair? You've dried off so quickly. You tried to form enough words to make an excuse, but as you flapped and flailed, the woman's eyes changed from narrowed slits to warm and knowing. Please, dear, do not fret. Ojiro is a kind boy. I would never scold him for doing something so nice. The relief was instant. You bowed. You bowed again. You made them deep and true thanking the woman for letting him off the hook. Then you turned, ready to make the rest of your journey home. Only the lady caught your attention before you moved. If you wait one moment. She pushed the receipt across the table towards you. I suggest you take this. Ojiro was rather insistent. You looked at the unassuming receipt. You looked at the woman for a hint, but she gave nothing away. Dutifully, you picked it up and clutched it in one hand, then headed outside. You waited for the door to close behind you, setting the bell off to say it had been disturbed, then took a closer look. You read over the numbers, noting nothing out of the ordinary, and then turned it over. There, scrawled on the back, was a handwritten note. For a princess who is as cute without makeup as she is with pudding on her face. Below that was a phone number. Your delighted screech reached all the way up to the open cafe windows. Ojiro did his absolute best to hold down a chuckle. <laughs>